The cromlech of the Almendras in Portugal dates back 8,000 years, making it one of the oldest megalithic complexes in Europe. Its design is noticeably unique in a Neolithic landscape which is mostly made up of dolmenic structures. So what was happening on the Iberian Peninsula 8,000 years ago? Let's find out. Near the village of Nossa Senhora de Guadalupe in the municipality of Evora sits one of the largest megalithic complexes on the Iberian Peninsula called the Almendras Cromlech, also known as the Cromlech of the Almendras. It's made up of 95 granite standing stones and was built in several phases, something which archaeologists identified while working at the site in the 1960s. The earliest phase of the monument began in 6000 BCE. That's 8,000 years ago. So, for context, that's 2,500 years older than the Maltese temples and 3,500 years older than Stonehenge, the bluestone phase, anyway. However, the dating isn't based on the monument itself, but on materials found near it and at Neolithic settlements in the vicinity. So it's not certain exactly when the Almendras Cromlech was built. It's sometimes referred to as the megalithic universe of Evora. Experts think that in the early Neolithic, the structure was made up of two or three concentric circles before it took on an elliptical shape in the middle Neolithic. Further modifications were then made in the late Neolithic. It measures 70 by 40 meters and has a northwest to southeast orientation. The standing stones vary in height between 2.5 and 3.5 meters, so not super tall. Not all of it remains today and various reconstructions have taken place, but it's still a monumental site and is thought to be aligned with the equinoxes. A 4.5 meter tall menhir is situated about a kilometer and a half to the northeast of the site and together with the complex forms an alignment with the sunrise at the winter solstice. There are interesting carvings on some of the standing stones, such as cut marks and an anthropomorphic figure. The top of monolith number 8 has been flattened and dimpling has been added. It's thought these dimples may have been carved to hold smaller stones for observing the spring equinox. It reminds me of the dimpling in the spheroidal stone at Monte Dacati in Sardinia and of the pitted decorations found in many parts of the Maltese temples. However, these all look more like they were for decoration or had some kind of symbolic purpose rather than being functional. Monolith number 48 is in a group of stones that maps out the partly anthropomorphic representation of a staff or crozier. In the Alenteo province where the Almendras Cromlech is situated, there are 12 megalithic enclosures in total of varying sizes. These are considered as part of a separate megalithic category to the funerary monuments, such as dolmens. However, none are quite as spectacular in shape, size and form as the Almendras Cromlech. One of these is the Portela de Mogos. This is smaller than the Almendras Cromlech, covering an area of 15 by 12 metres and dates to between 4000 and 3500 BCE. It's made up of 40 standing stones in total. 21 of these are still upright, with some forming a semicircle oriented to the west. It's possible the original form of the monument consisted of concentric stone circles, just as the Almendras Cromlech. Six of the stones are carved somewhat anthropomorphically, and it's thought breasts and stylized faces are depicted. The Vale Maria do Meo Cromlech is located around 10 kilometers to the northeast of the Almendras complex. It's made up of 34 granite standing stones forming an arc. Most of the stones are a little under two meters in height. Just as with the other two cromlechs mentioned, some of these stones are carved with symbols. Here they are mostly circles, horseshoes and crescents. Some researchers have suggested that the circles represent the sun and the crescents depict the moon, but obviously this cannot be confirmed with any certainty. This becomes more relevant if we consider the cromlechs as having had astronomical functions. More on that in a moment. The Sherus Cromlech is thought to date to between 6000 and 3000 BCE. It was moved to its current location after the construction of the Alcueva Dam, which flooded its original site. Strangely, the Sherus Cromlech is square-shaped. 
It's made up of 55 granite stones measuring between 0.37 and 2.1 meters in height, with a 4.5 meter tall men here sitting in the center of the square. Some of the stones feature carvings similar to the Almendras cromlech. Excavations at the original site showed that the area had probably been inhabited since the Paleolithic, with the cromlech appearing in the Neolithic and undergoing various phases of remodeling. It was still in use in the Chalcolithic. There has been much debate as to whether the reconstruction is accurate or not. Some researchers think it is inaccurate and that the monument was probably circular rather than square originally. It's also not certain that all the men here currently forming the cromlech were part of the former structure. There were also several individual men here in the Elenteo region, which are usually referred to as phallic men here. They are thought to have been part of some sort of Neolithic fertility cult. The men here of Miada is 7.5 meters in height, so huge, and is made of porphyroid granite. It was found broken into two pieces in 1965, but was then reconstructed in the 1990s. Coals found under its base were radiocarbon dated to 5000 BCE, making the men here very ancient. The men here of Altero was found lying on its side in 1969 before being raised again the following year. It is 5.6 meters in height and is also made of granite. A small hollow in the top is thought by researchers to represent a urethra, thereby giving the men here a phallic role in a fertility ritual. Another resurrected monolith is the men here of Patalu, which measures four meters in height. Charred wood found under the base gave a date range between 4290 and 4185 BCE. A team analyzed some of the megalithic enclosures. A team analyzed some of the megalithic enclosures in the Elenteo region to see if there was any astronomical significance to their orientations. Not all enclosures were included in the research due to either their dilapidated state or debate over the ways in which they had been reconstructed. The latter pertains mostly to the Sheres Cromlech. Only enclosures with clear orientations were included. The researchers published the results of their survey and calculations in Archaeologia Baltica and concluded that the enclosures were not simply built to follow the slopes they were situated on, but were positioned in a way that suggests astronomical alignments. Four declinations stood out as important to the builders of the megaliths. The sun at the beginning of spring and at the end of summer, as well as the full moon at the beginning of autumn and the end of winter. So rather than the usual solstitial and equinoctial alignments that are often attributed to megalithic monuments, these researchers have found that one solstice and one equinox stand out as important, as well as lunar alignments. A lot of effort must have gone into creating such precise astronomical alignments. So what do we have here? The cromleks and menhirs of Alenteo do not have a funerary function. So what roles did they play in the lives of the Neolithic inhabitants of the area? Were cromleks astronomical observatories? If so, why? Were menhirs really focal points for a fertility cult? What was the relationship between the two? Were they in some way connected to the funerary architecture that also exists in the region? Perhaps they had practical functions that are difficult for us to determine from the evidence available. Also, just how old are these monuments? As I said in my video, the Karnak Enigma, what was going on in Neolithic France, a research paper suggests that megalithism originated in northwestern France and traveled down the Atlantic coast of the Iberian Peninsula and north into the UK before diffusing throughout the Mediterranean and Europe via a marine route. As I discuss in my video, I don't really agree with this. However, the monuments in Iberia are certainly very ancient and as such are important to our understanding of the whole mystery. Personally, I do think that astronomy was important to the ancients, but I think it went further than solstitial and equinoctial alignments. I also don't really think there was a fertility cult as such, but more a complex belief system centered on the afterlife rebirth and the soul's journey in the cosmos. I think that it's interesting to look at the megalithic heritage of Neolithic Portugal in the context of other 
earlier sites as well. The Coa Valley in the northeast part of Portugal has thousands of rock carvings, many of which date to the Paleolithic era, between 22,000 and 10,000 years ago. Most of the older rock art is zoomorphic, featuring horses, bovines, caprines, deer and fish. Amongst the carvings from the Magda Lanens period between 16,000 and 10,000 years ago, there's a single anthropomorphic figure with a phallus. Rock art dating to the later periods of the Neolithic and Bronze Age has a mix of zoomorphic, anthropomorphic and geometric carvings. Europe has several other well-known sites featuring Paleolithic art, such as Lascaux in France and Altamira in Spain. What's different about the Coa Valley is that it's an open-air site and almost all of the art is made from carving, incising or picking the rock rather than painting it. These areas with such a long and interesting history fascinate me. The transition from the Paleolithic to the Neolithic via the Mesolithic via the Mesolithic, saw more sophisticated and settled societies develop with complex belief systems. But how did the advent of farming bring such a change in rituals and beliefs? Why did communities go from creating rock art about their observable world to erecting enormous megalithic structures? Which groups pushed and taught this new monumental architecture and why? It's just such a departure from what went before. But then, one of the earliest megalithic sites, Gobekli Tepe, was established before agriculture evolved in the Fertile Crescent. That has led many experts to think that agriculture was spearheaded by monument building, not the other way around. If you think about it, it makes sense. Since megalithic monuments would have taken a long time to build, it meant people needed to stay in one place and also needed resources to sustain that new lifestyle. But whether the megalith builders appeared before or after agriculture, or whether it varied depending on the region, there has to be something else that changed the belief systems so dramatically. What was the catalyst? As I've said in other videos such as how old is the evil eye belief system? Ritual and magic have often played a role in domesticating chance, in trying to control the uncontrollable. Environmental changes, natural disasters, and certain socio-economic conditions have often led people to look at supernatural solutions for tangible problems. So there's quite a lot we could speculate on here. And of course, I'll be doing that on this channel in due course. Whenever I ask questions or highlight areas I would like to look into further, I really am working on them. I have a huge notebook full of different research areas and video ideas. I'm reading all the time and traveling whenever I can afford to. This channel is meant to be educational and fun, but it's also meant to solve mysteries. And you're watching that process take place. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Please continue to watch and check out some of my previous work. Thank you to my patrons. If anyone else wants to join my Patreon community, it's cheap. The link is in the description below. Come and find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where I post pretty often. I've also got a website with some further information on the sites I visit myself, megalithhunter.com.